The catfish is probably the hardest fighting species in the UK and in some waters across Europe can grow over 200 pounds. This video is gonna be all about how to catch Wells catfish. Today we've come to the dedicated catfish lake at Churchwood Fisheries. This is quite typical of catfish lakes across the country. Reasonably good stock and it gives us a great chance of catching fish for the cameras today. Of course we'd all love to jet set across the world and catch huge catfish from wild rivers like the Ebro or the River Po, but more attainable, more realistic, it's somewhere like this and uh, that's why we've come here today. Identifying a catfish isn't too hard because there's nothing else really that lives in the UK which looks like a Wells catfish. Some of the key features, uh, firstly, their giant round mouth. Their mouths are huge for the, for the actual size of the fish. And they're lined with a very rough, hard material. It's called their, their pads. And they use that for chomping down on their prey fish. And, and I've seen uh, smaller silverfish that have been attacked and you can just see the pad marks across, across their backs. Um, interestingly, the catfish has a very small eye. They, they find their prey by, using, uh, by sensing vibrations in the water and by smell rather than the eyesight because their eyes are, are actually miniature. It's surprising how small they are. They must not be able to see much. Also, they have a very small dorsal fin in fact, the catfish kind of looks like a giant slug. It hasn't really got your usual uh, the fins like, like most fish have. They, they certainly aren't uh, the best looking fish, that's for sure. There is our first catfish of the session. I'd say this one probably weighs about 12 pounds, 15 pounds. So basically, basically there's fish that are like three or four times bigger in this lake that we may catch this session. But a fine example of a catfish, and I'm happy to get off the mark during the daytime. In the wild, catfish are predators, so they will naturally feed on smaller live fish, but they'll also scavenge stuff off the bottom like dead fish or uh, crayfish. In the UK, however, on places like this and on day ticket waters where catfish have been stocked, they will feed a lot on whatever the fishermen are throwing in. So uh, a lot of the catfish's diet will include boilies and pellets and fishermen's bait like that. So on this session, we've chosen to put a couple of rods on uh, boilies. And then we've also got a rod or two on spam, which is a really smelly, meaty uh, bait. And then Carl's also put a rod on a bunch of worms as well, which is a bit more uh, of a natural approach, uh, trying to match what the catfish would be naturally feeding on. But we've got a few different baits to try and we're gonna see how it goes. Get it, get it, get it, get it. That's definitely a fish on. Oh my goodness, it is all going crazy. Thank goodness we've got Josh here to help film, otherwise we would be stuck. <laughs> It's very twisted, but we've got two catfish. Carl's got one, I've got one. That is why we like catfishing a lot. 
Oh, there we go. We just pulled in two catfish. I think mine was bigger, a little bit. Really? Yeah. I hope you're talking about the catfish, by the way. Yeah, my catfish. Anyway, uh, yeah, two more fish. Seems like this session is going to be pretty hectic. Hopefully, we can work our way through to find some of the much bigger ones that live in this lake as well. Uh, the, uh, I had mine on a boilie and you had yours on the spam. Yeah, this was on spam. So basically, every bait is working. Yeah. And uh, yeah, one point of note is catfish are quite difficult to hold. They're very slimy and you should really bring a spare change of clothes if you're fishing for cats because you'll probably get covered in slime. It's worse when you get one twice the size of this though. Yeah, and you've got to rest of it. These, these are manageable size. They're exactly the same. Your one's not bigger, yes. you liar. So catfish seem to be very much affected by water temperature. Unlike perch, pike and zander, which I'll often catch just as many of in the winter as I do in the early spring or late autumn, catfish seem to really switch off on the waters that we fish at least in those cold months. That's why we planned this session for middle of spring. It just seems to be that when those temperatures start rising up to you know high teens, low 20s, that is when the catfish seem to really wake up from their winter slumber and get on the feed. As you would have already seen, catfish pull incredibly hard. So you do need tackle, which is gonna be up to the job. Now on this particular session, we are just using uh, a standard three pound test curve, 10 foot carp rod and uh, a medium sized reel. The difference between uh, this and a normal carp setup is that I've switched out the reel line for 20 pounds rather than what I'd normally use for carp, which is uh, 12 or 15. Now, because we're fishing a lake with not many snags and not many things that the fish is gonna get tangled around once it's on the end, we can get away with a setup like this. But in the past, we have fished places which are a lot more snaggy. Uh, there's lots of lily pads and stuff for the, uh, the catfish to get stuck in and snagged up in. And we've had to use a lot stronger tackle. If you're thinking of fishing a water which is more snaggy, uh, there's lily pads or there's lots of weed, you're going to need a stronger setup. So ideally you'd use a rod over 3.5 test curve. This won't bend as much and will give you the strength you need to pull those catfish away from the snags. And then on your reel, it's good to use uh, a braid of uh, 30 pounds or more. I know in the past we've used 50 pound braid. It just gives you that confidence that you're going to be able to bring those catfish in and uh, beat them in the battle so they don't get in the snags. Other bits of kit which are handy to have is a large net because catfish can get over six foot long and you need a big net to get them in. And then a big unhooking mat. It's handy to have bite alarms uh, and bobbins if you are going to be uh, fishing for longer periods of time, especially overnight. Or if you're like us and you're just doing a day session and you're lazy and you don't want to watch your rods constantly, you can put them on alarms like we're doing. Strong tackle is basically what you need to catch catfish. You use the strongest tackle you have and you have the best chance of landing those catfish. We got ourselves another one. Every fish pulls like crazy and you think you've got a world record on the end. But this isn't even half the size of the, uh, the monsters that live in this lake. So we're gonna keep trying. The catfishing rig that we're using this session is kind of very similar to a carp fishing rig, but everything is scaled up slightly because catfish are very strong and they've also got tough mouths. So you need to use adequate strength hook link material uh, to deal with that. So firstly, I've got some rig tubing that is to protect the catfish's uh, slime 
There's also the fishery rules here, so you have to use that. I've got a lead clip, so that's very familiar if you're a carp fisherman. But instead of using a size 8 swivel that you'd normally use, plugged in the end of that uh, lead clip, I've actually got a size 11 swivel. And that is because it's slightly smaller and it doesn't actually jam in the end tightly. So it will create a rig which is slightly uh, less resistance and this can run freely on the main line. So when the catfish picks up the bait, it doesn't feel as much resistance as it would if you were using a size eight swivel and it being a bolt rig. On that uh, lead clip, I've got a 1.5 ounce lead. We don't need to cast far on this session, but that is completely up to you what you use as a, as a weight. Then we've got the hook link. This is a coated braid hook link. The reason why I keep the coating on is because of the catfish's very abrasive pads. Now, if you were to use a thin braid or mono, then there's a high chance that with the hook link rubbing on those pads constantly, it can wear through that and uh, it's likely that it's gonna snap your line. So by using a 25 pound coated braid hook link, even if that coating gets stripped back, you've still got the inner core to keep it nice and strong. And then I have got a hook, a rather large wide gape hook. This is, I think, a size two, so uh, a, pr a pretty hefty big hook, and it's quite a thick wired hook as well. And that's just to give you maximum strength. And then I've just got a hair rig, a knotless knot, just like you would use if you were carp fishing. And on this hair, you can just put anything you want, some worms, some spam, or uh, boilies. And that's what we've been doing this session. We've been trying all three of those baits and they've all been working. So yeah, just adjust that hair length to suit the bait that you want to use. Well, sometimes I found you can switch the fish on and get them feeding and get some quick bites by just pinging a few baits over the top of your spots. Sometimes you can do this with big halibut pellets. Um, sometimes you can feed a load of chopworm or maggot by spawning. Uh, but right now I'm just catapulting boilies over the top of each of the rods. I'll do a couple over there, then a couple over the other spot, and then just cycle back over. That just means there's the noise of them hitting, hitting the surface, which will definitely help draw them in and um, switch them onto feeding but also you're introducing bait to the swim and uh, catfish definitely love their bait. I'm expecting that tonight will be hectic. This is because in the most part, catfish do tend to be um, nocturnal, meaning they feed more and they're more active during the hours of darkness. We've certainly found during our time catfishing over the years that nighttime can be really quite productive. And if you want to go catfishing and the lake that you're fishing is quite hard, I'd just say focus on the night time. That tends to be the best chance of catching them. Anyway, I'm gonna put out a few more baits, turn off the cameras and yeah, get ready for probably what's going to be a busy night. I've woken up this morning rather tired because we had a lot of activity last night. Caught a few fish, we didn't get a lot of footage of those, uh, but we also witnessed some catfish feeding activity during the hours of darkness. Catfish will often uh, shoal up um, underneath uh, bait fish like roach and rudd and then attack them up on the surface where those fish are most vulnerable. And last night, it was quite hard to see because it was very dark, but we crept around this bay and the roach were all scattering everywhere. And then from underneath them, the catfish were coming up and hitting them. And that just shows how predatory catfish can be. On some places, um, uh, people do quite well using live baits. I understand though that some people would rather not do that. And uh, the baits have also produced fish, but definitely it was amazing to witness uh, those catfish attacking the roach and rudd just underneath the surface out there last night. Today, we're gonna stick at it, see if we can get one more decent cat before the end of the session.
Having filmed most of the video, we let Fishing Tutorial's cameraman Josh strike the next bite. Little did we know it was going to be the biggest fish so far. It's definitely bigger. Poor Josh is reeling it in on my left-handed reels. I mean, that's, <laughs> that is difficult to be honest. I don't like doing it like that. We've got a couple of better fish now, and to save you getting all your clothes completely slimed up, because I've ruined some t-shirts and hoodies during my time catfishing, I'm gonna put on a, a waterproof coat. Just means that the slime will go on this and will wash off better, because you sometimes have to wrestle catfish a little bit when you're trying to take a picture. There we go. How's that for your first time catfishing, Josh? Yeah, mega. <laughs> We caught a couple of uh, quite big ones to end this session. Hopefully the video helped you and look forward to more fishing tutorial videos coming soon. I think we're gonna put them down. Yeah. <laughs> oh.